Hello everybody, this is Victor here from Trend Following Trading for Beginners and here's my weekly update on my sample trading portfolio coming up next. Hello guys, welcome to my podcast, another week gone by and happy Easter for everybody. Um, basically for last week, it's only like four trading days uh, in US and UK anyway. And uh, there's not much going on with Dow Jones. It's up 100 pounds and down 100 pounds and then down again and we recover by itself for another 200 pounds. So overall, um, with only four days trading, uh, so much happening. It's just like up and down, relatively similar to about a month ago. Uh, just going to be sideways and very quiet. Um, but on the other hand, there was quite a bit of other activities going on. Uh, in UK, we have uh, Deliveroo, uh, and basically a delivery service that gone for rotation in UK in the London Stock Exchange. And uh, initially, uh, it was talked about, you know, quite about four pounds ten or four fifty or something area, and then. It actually floated is on a, a lower price range of three uh, three ninety three hundred ninety p, and then it collapsed down to like um, at the end of the first day on Wednesday trading at around three hundred uh, one pen or have three hundred and two pennies, so it dropped like twenty two twenty three percent. And uh, for for me basically, th- this one is quite significant. Uh, first of all, I'm quite surprised Deliveroo can still you know get to the bottom of the range and float it because um, Deliveroo is you know, coming out of the market when the basically general economy is not great and they're still able to float. It's good. Yes, it's down by twenty three percent or so. That means that the price is still too high. But I think uh, overall, at least there's some uh, appetites in UK market to uh, absorb uh, a new uh, um, share flotation that kind of thing uh, we just have to wait and see on now however um, Deliveroo for me personally I use it a lot in uh, UK uh, I initially saw something similar like this when I worked in Bulgaria in back in 2005 people just called out um, to uh, to get things to get delivered and uh, yeah people pay pay a little uh, delivery price for it so now it's coming to I mean it's around the world now um, the UK is not uh, no difference um, the, but um, the delivery model as far as I'm concerned is uh, they might have uh, made quite a bit of uh, comeback, so to speak, uh, last year due to the pandemic and still going on at the moment because people were locked down and stuck in their own house and not able to uh, get get out and get food and also got the health and safety concern that kind of thing uh, because of COVID-19. So uh, delivery sort of uh, make a bit of money this time, but still, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, the model is burning money basically. And uh, Uber Eats also comes into uh, play, the Uber the taxi driver service. In UK, also deal with food. So, I think overall that model um, is a bit uh, what I call uh, it's got to burn money, and uh, uh, that's why one of the reasons I didn't go into that uh, uh, buying of that share at all. Apparently, uh, you, you can you can buy the shares if you are a customer of Deliveroo, um, but I didn't even offer that at all. But I just overall I just feel that this um, geek. Uh, um, uh, segment working some of people who basically work in a like, um, Uber or very uh, uh, no fixed term contract or zero zero date contract kind of thing in uh, in UK. Um, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be um, you know the auto company who offer the zero will have to offer like holiday pay and pensions and sick pay over time. Um, Uber drivers already want that, so delivery rule probably over time will have to spend a lot more money uh, on uh, on the people doing delivery. And I think uh, it might go to uh, into its uh, business model or the profit margin and so forth. So um, I'm not quite sure how how they might go o- uh, o- forward, um, but at least it's floated and use some of the money to uh, expand its service and also pay down its debts. But um, personally, I, I not, I'm not a fan on this uh, delivery share rotation, I told myself. But it, it, it does give a bit of uplift in the UK market, at least it's floated. It's down but 23%. Um, then of course we have um, basically last last week I think last Friday um, we have some uh, another collapse of uh, investment funds uh, sort of uh, it's called Anchi Anchi goes uh, capital investment basically it's run by some uh, Japanese uh, investor firm or family firm whatever they call it and uh, they suffer a huge margin calls and then. Um, uh, banks that supported uh, these funds um, basically have to force to liquidate. So, a lot of movement last Friday um, on uh, Firecoms and Baidu, Tencent, and things have gone down a lot. But uh, some companies seem to have um, some of the banks seem to come out unscathed or uh, change very little. 
Uh, but again, um, when you look at the chart of those banks and stuff that is, you know, generally reported in the, in the news media and then also on the internet, um, some seems to be do better than others and have get out a bit earlier. But um, Quick Dick Sues, um, the Swiss uh, bank company, seems to be the ones uh, in the firing line. It have lent quite a lot of money to this um, actually goes. Um, uh, uh, investment funds and um, lost quite a bit of money and um, even before uh, early in March uh, the the price charts already gone below 280 ATR lines and it was because they also have a, a bit of a issue of involvement with the collapse of Greensill Capital early in March and dragged the price down sort of like you know as far as I'm concerned uh, for the banking industry I think Credit Suisse seems to be a bit of a problematic with uh, its own internal uh, uh, risk safety things not doing um, uh, Checks are not doing too well, um, um, and this is what's actually showing up as well. And also, when you look at those uh, charts that you know, Firecar and Baidu and things like that's been involved, um, you know, this debacle, um, the chart again has shows us, you know, both hands that um, somebody already know about a situation or they start selling, and then and then basically the two eighty hour system catch them all. Um, but unfortunately, I think um, one one thing that really I mean useful to to look at in, in this example is trend following. Um, yeah, like I say before, some some people will always show their hands beforehand, and trend following can catch those well before the news actually uh, shows up in in the financial news to say you know, actually reported there was issue. So this uh, again just gave me a, a good good uh, feeling of why I'm trying uh, trend following you know, reinforce that that thinking because um, the price will always tell things you know but yes um, some uh, shares actually did a, um, a cliff fall and uh, didn't didn't show his hand before but that's far and far between but also on that sense that um, um, trend following is not uh, Great for everything. It's not going to be you know, able to cover air or, or if you're uh, trapped and stuff. Sometimes it does you know fall off a cliff because there's some sudden um, news are coming out and some shares do you know suddenly just drop and well past you know, a couple of uh, signals and then so forth. And um, this is the another reason about trend following is that um, on the flip side of it, sometimes you don't catch the actual trend, and it's because some. Um, uh, big events happens and forces the, the price and it jumps through the hoop so to speak and break a lot of uh, all your signals uh, on the reverse side and this is the time to stick with your systems and take a long term view because over time you will if you trade long enough no I'm not talking about one year or two years I'm talking about five years maybe ten years you will see some of those happens maybe you know once every two three years something suddenly you know uh, share going nicely like fire comp suddenly doom, come straight down and you don't know what happened until much later on and all you have is just share price gone down 20 30 percent and well past all your stop losses and stuff and some people are holding on to it and as far as i'm concerned trend following actually say uh the price have uh, changed and have changed sign with your system say go reverse and just go reverse sometimes um, you just have to take this on the chin but because of the tra- you do a trading in a long-term way and things um you get get better over time you know you um, catch some of those profit back again um, this is uh, the, the whole idea I think um, all those people out there talking about holy grail you know find the systems and that will be just use that system forever it will be you know money is in all the time no all systems are built on uh, certain theories certain people's experience and and built on that they're all full of holes so some sometimes it works sometimes it does not work to, um, to, for the financial industry it seems to like jump between systems to show you you can always make money like banks and other things like that uh, well first of all we are uh, we tell investors we're not banks uh, because uh, we just uh, how we are secondly we don't have the, such a big deep pocket and use other people's money to trade but for us with uh, what our own money hard earned money trend following seems uh, it's the better way for me anyway to, to trade and if you stick your long term enough, you see um, your money basically grows uh, slowly and over time and get much better. But interesting question on those those um, who is sitting on the other side of this Friday collapse um, on uh, Archigo's uh, financial issues here? Uh, what is actually triggering it? Nobody seems to be able to say something. But uh, I may offer my view. It could be well be because um, last year uh, there's a lot of um, um, what you call the Nasdaq, the technology companies gone up quite you know many folks like tesla 700 times um 
um, for this year, we will not continue. People, some phones probably have bad heavily, very, very heavy on technology, and they actually come down and cause quite a bit of a stir this year. Um, then, uh, because they overreached so much, they make lots of money last year, but this year, because the spread uh, too too much exposure, too much risk, and um, yeah, when the market sort of turn or just uh, the music sort of to slow a bit, so to speak. Uh, and they just get beaten on, on the ba- backside, and then uh, they call a lot of margin calls and liquidation force to happen. And um, I, I just think that's what's happening. And secondly, also the 10 years and 30 years uh, U.S. dollar, uh, U.S. Treasury, uh, so the yield have you know gone down uh, quite a bit, and then you jump back up again. I think that up and down because people are using, especially big banks, use you know margin call, uh, you know from um, other other banks and so forth. They, they suffer margin calls. And um, and basically being forced to be liquidated, they don't come up with the money, that kind of thing. And I think there's quite a bit of the people was betting the um, the treasury yield will continue to go up, but it it didn't, and they caused a bit of a uh, issue as well. And also this we sort of see it this week of uh, gold as well got liquidated a uh, few days after the last Friday. I think so. Uh, this week on just Monday, thirty uh, Wednesday, thirty first of Mar- um, um, March. And gold price actually went down, and now it's created like a double bottom. Um, the second leg down, uh, which around one six sixteen seventy seven somewhere, but it's not as low as sixteen seventy six or seventy five last uh, about uh, about a month or three weeks or so ago. And so now, it's, um, if is uh, the recovery continue, we probably see a W bottom, and we it sort of show a signal as well last time, and also. Um, uh, with the dollar index actually recovered and gone to uh, 93.5, 93.7 early in the week, the price of gold didn't go below much below um, 1700. Okay, we have this debacle where actually goes and um, suddenly dropped on Wednesday 31st, but it is still above the the last low, which is 1676, and um, the lows on the 31st on Wednesday was 1677. So. Even with all this bullishness for that, no, that's against gold. The gold didn't actually um, um, uh, go down much, much further, and actually create a a W bottom, and a double bottom, so to speak. And also, the MACD is showing uh, sort of like a bullish divergence as well. I think gold is definitely got something uh, to to look out for. I'm not predicting anything, but basically the road signs are there, and gold seems to be, you know, having a a bit of. Uh, um, um, probably push later on to to increase its price. So we we'll just have to wait and see. But of course, uh, last but not least, we also have uh, President Joe Biden in U.S. Uh, proposed a three trillion U.S. dollars infrastructure spending project kind of things, and we start economies and so forth. That if it comes to fruition, then that means another what well, three trillions of the, the one point nine trillion just being passed out to U.S. Uh, citizens. And we really got to uh, have a case for large weakness of the U.S. dollar. But at the moment, it's all um, um, in the works, so to speak. The three trillions may not get passed um, the Senate and House so far. We just have to wait and see what happens. And so basically, just have to see what happens next. Okay, next, let's look at my trend following sample portfolio and see how it goes last week. Okay, first off the bat is Apple. Uh, same as last week, short term is a buy, mean term is neutral, long term is neutral. Next is Amazon. Um, again, same as last week. Almost change overall, I think, this week. Uh, so, for a message. Uh, for Amazon, is uh, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, but long term has changed to neutral as well now. So, we uh, have sort of crawled back some of the prices over the week. Um, Australian dollars next against US dollars. Short term is a sale, medium term is sale. Uh, long term is neutral. Um, I said before the um, the U.S. dollar index have uh, gone back above 33. No, sorry, 93. Um, no, I think at one stage gone up to 93.7 or something. But Australian dollar didn't actually go, d- you know, weaken too much. It's still around the 70.76.75 area. So. Um, of, overall, we just have to wait and see. O- overall, I think the overall message is when the U.S. dollar sort of uh, index recovered, um, a lot of other currencies don't seems to have you know uh, suddenly fallen value a lot, and uh, so it's just show you the underlying 
trend that uh, doesn't matter what um, U.S. dollar is doing, each of the other countries' uh, currencies seems to have some sort of baseline established. It's just refused to go down big uh, very quickly, um, a bit unlike gold, the kind of thing. So uh, I think Australian dollar against U.S. dollar sort of show so that is itself. Uh, next is spend crude, short term is a sell, medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. This is same as WTI, short term is a sell. Medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. So, bank crude overall, or short term, yeah, it's, a, it's really a sale. It's going sideways at the moment. Um, it took quite a while for it to you know, slowly try to actually uh, going back uh, up to the $65, accounting or $78 uh, kind of area. took quite a bit of time, but then slowly it come back down now uh, a little bit, but it's just gone sideways a bit. So, we just uh, wait and see what happens. Probably would take, you know, uh, could oil probably take some time to um, to to change direction again because it took quite a bit of time to go up. I think quite quite a bit of time to consolidate before it actually um, shows what it's doing. At the moment, it's more like a uh, little uh, uh, consolidation sideways trade for now. Uh, next is DAX. Um, to continue to buy same as last week. Short term, medium, and long term still continue to go up. Uh, Dow Jones is the uh, same. Uh, short term, medium, and long term still buy. So both DAX and Dow Jones seems to. Uh, on a buy uh, trend at the moment, it's uptrend at the moment. For C100 in UK, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is a buy, no change from last week there. Uh, gold, uh, short term is a sell, medium term is neutral, short term is a sell, uh, long term is a sell as well. So, as I said before, um, gold seems to be, I mean, from the signal point of view, from the trading point of view, it seems to have. Um, same as last week, I haven't actually changed, still uh, short term is a sell, long term is a sell, medium term is neutral. But uh, I think it's slowly showing some um, sign of uh, it is doing something you know, slightly differently. Uh, we have seen a sort of a double bottom formation. Uh, the, the, the second bottom didn't go the lower than the first bottom. And and you look at that uh, uh, with the MACD histogram as well, it is, um, MACD is having a lower, a lower uh, high. Uh, for the second um, downward move uh, back in last or Wednesday, I believe. And this sort of set up a, a, a bullish divergence. Now, there might be still a chance for gold to, you know, pop, uh, popping around at the bottom 1770, 1776 area, that kind of thing again a couple of times. But uh, if the bearers, uh, the bullish divergence continue with the MACD, I think uh, gold definitely is something to watch out for. It will just shoot up. And if that happens and uh, break above, I think, 1750, then that's the rim of the, um, of the W. But um, bottom um, double bottom shape, and if that happens, then I think we're looking at you know eighteen hundred maybe more for for gold. But this is just like predicting, which I'm not really into. But the road sign actually showing what's happening, and um, the signal basically is uh, at the moment it's a sell, but the signal is uh, road sign saying get uh, gold probably poised to move up. So watch out for gold. Uh, next is uh, Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong. Short term is a sell. Medium is neutral. Long term is also neutral. Uh, again, this is sort of showing some sign of uh, recovering, falling down. Jones. Next is Nasdaq. Short term is a buy. Medium term is neutral. Long term is also buy. So technology share seems to have uh, recovered a little bit, but um, um, not as much as like down Jones continue making new high and so forth. But uh, which is a wait and see. Next is Nikkei in Japan. Short term is a buy, medium is neutral, long term is also a buy, so similar to NASDAQ. Uh, next is silver. Uh, short term is a sell, medium, long term is neutral. Um, unlike gold, silver seems still a bit of a uh, downward movement, and uh, we just have to wait and see uh, what, what it does uh, next. But as usual, it's always lag behind gold. So I think you, we should all watch our silver as well with gold to make a move breaking up, going up. Uh, silver probably follows a bit later, but it always, always does. So we just have to wait and see. Okay. Next is US dollar against Chinese yuan. Chinese dollar uh, short term is a buy, medium is a buy, long term is neutral. So this um, um, recovery, so to speak, of um, um, US dollar strength against uh, the Chinese dollar uh, continue to recover and. Uh, 
uh, we just have to wait and see how much recovery is going on. But overall, I think um, the U.S. dollars over time, um, maybe um, if the Joe Biden three trillion dollars uh, infrastructure chain uh, project proposal actually come to fruition, U.S. dollars just go be across the board will be weakening, uh, not against just Chinese uh, do- dollar, but across a range of commodities and the foreign exchange and gold and silver that kind of thing. So I think second half of this year definitely something to watch out for. Uh, maybe more interesting uh, if the Joe Biden got his weight and uh, um, sent out this uh, three trillion dollars of infrastructure bills across and become law, then uh, there will be quite a bit of uh, movement within. Of course, uh, U.S. will you know have a lot more uh, building work going on, and you know we start the economy, which is which is great. But then on the other hand, is who's going to pay for it? It's always going to borrow. Uh, from other countries who's going to you know buy the treasury bills or something and um, that definitely will weaken the u.s dollar you know, so second half of the year we'll probably see a lot more of uh, actual how people feel about the u.s dollars next is uh, british pound against japanese yen um, short term medium and long term still buy no change from last week and after that is uh, british pound against u.s dollar uh, short term is a sell medium and long term is neutral so u.s dollars uh, against british pound of course the u.s dollars index seems to have gone better uh, recover so uh, for British pound against US dollars uh, continue to sell more from last week but uh, for against British pound against Japanese yen it's still on the upward trajectory next is Bitcoin uh, short term medium long term is buy um, I said last week it's still having an issue uh, trying to break above this uh, 60,000 marks it's hovering around 57, 56,000 uh, and 60,000 marks, so we just continue just sideways trade, uh, but it's still a buy as far as the trend for the system is concerned. Um, next is um, TLT ETF, the iShare 20 TLT ETF. Um, short term is a buy, medium and long term is a sell. So this one is um, sort of showing the the, um, the US Treasury uh, bonds uh, uh, have some we cover um, a, a little, and, um, the, and obviously the uh, yield actually gone down a bit, but seems to have um, come back down again now. Um, so basically, the yield seems to have uh, U.S. Treasury yield is going up and down. Uh, what I mean here is when U.S. Treasury be, uh, yield um, is actually going up, I mean the price of the U.S. Treasury uh, um, is actually gone down. So um, we just have to all watch out. Does it? Uh, the word on the street is uh, the 10 years U.S. Treasury bill may go to 2% or something, and uh, 30 years may go to 3%. Um, just at the way and see um, how things go, but uh, TLT, ETF, definitely best way to track them. Uh, next is Tesla. Short term is a buy, medium and long term is neutral. Tesla haven't changed much for the last couple of weeks. Is uh, Short term is slowly recovering, but it's still um, uh, way away from its peak from last year. Uh, next is Australian uh, index XJO. Uh, short term is a sell, medium is neutral, long term is a buy. So on this one, similar to last week, just sideways trade, not doing much headway at the moment. Uh, last but not least is Alibaba. Short term is a sell, medium is neutral, long term is a sell. So this one, um, similar to any technology share, uh, it's not as good as Tesla. Haven't really recovered much yet. It's still on a, on in the dark house, so to speak. Um, but we just have to um, wait and see the the uh, regulation in China basically really hurting it, and uh, the new regulation is uh, not in favor of Alibaba. I think Alibaba is a strong company, probably still have you know legs, but as far as the uh, transfer system is concerned, is uh, it's a sell. Uh, like I said many times before we don't trade emotion, we trade with system, we trade mathematics, we trade with a uh, with a method and. This is a good reason about using trend following. Is uh, basically we take away all the news, we take away all the emotions, we just follow a system, mathematical base based on end of day price, and we don't have to worry about why the share price gone this or what the Chinese government does or U.S. government does, and if the price actually gone down or up, and when we plug into our equation, our equation says sell at the end or buy at the end. That's all we follow. So I, this is one of the reason, the main reason for me really is um, I. I like trend following. I just don't want all this emotional baggage. Because how do you second guess how the market is doing? As far as I'm concerned, the market is like a ball of sardine. Uh, each one of us is a little sardine fish. And uh, together, we sort of form a, uh, a community, a board that have its own thinking, you know, movement and way to will to move. And so for an individual sardine to think of how the overall movement of the sardine fish ball is going to move is very difficult to um, to guess. And you might have got to guess it wrong. 
rice once or twice, but for long term, all the time, guessing you know where the actual balls is, even though you're right inside this uh, ball of sardines, um, it's going to be very, very difficult and hard to come by. So same thing about trend following. For us to guess what the 04 market enforces, you know, all retail investors, professional traders, you know, governments, you know, our government policies around the world to second guess economic policies and how the market will you know will um, take the information and 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 show something share prices or index or more commodity prices is very difficult to do so for me to a trend following those good things just take away that emotion just for the price the price tell us exactly what we need to do using my formula and we basically follow our system and that's the, the end of the day what trend following is about i hope you found this podcast useful and i will talk to you next week bye for now and stay safe